welcome to the course introduction to electrical engineering. Today we will talk on lecture 7 on tangent response of first order circuits. Uh, the outline of presentation is starting from introduction, we will discuss source free RC circuits, source free RL circuit, tangent response of first order uh, circuits and we will discuss of course, some exercise in numerical problem followed by references. So, coming to introduction part of it, well uh, we have a tangent called, uh, with the definition of it. Uh, the conventional definition of course, is lasting for short time in permanent or it, which is not permanent you can call it, it is only exist for short period. In electrical terms it is an momentary, it is a momentary variation in the current voltage or frequency. A tangent response is the response of the system to change from an equilibrium or steady state condition. Well, tangent response is also referred to sometime as a dynamic response in some definition. Well, this is the typical example as you can see, I mean how the let us say the position moving with respect to the time, I mean and converging to the final steady state operating point. So, classical elementary physical example is the oscillations of the pendulum shown here and the plot on the left shows the displacement from the center line versus time and eventually the oscillations dampen as pendulum halts like. Well, the study of the dynamic behavior of linear circuits and systems containing one or more energy storing elements is the is considerable importance to the engineer to the for the following two reasons. As a linear circuit is a circuit that obeys the superposition principle what we discussed last time and informally a linear circuit is one in which the electronic component values R L C do not change with voltage and current in the circuit. Well, one would like to know how long it, it takes the circuit to respond the source function or the responses and energy in a energy storing element such as inductor and capacitor cannot change instantaneously and that causes the tangent response to happen in the circuit like. Well, the period of adjustment during the during which the stored energy changes from some initial level to a new commanded final level is called the settling time of the circuit or the system. I mean the circuit may be a part of system or it may be total system itself like. Well, here you can see how the tangents are there, the current in the inductor, how it I mean rises from 0 and it goes to the final steady state temperature. Similarly, the voltage rises in the across the capacitors and as or you can see there are some oscillatory current in the circuit which uh, may be in RL circuit which may be for the if you are not switching at power instant so there is a possibility that you might have a oscillation in the circuit and finally, settle down to a steady state value. Well, the voltage current achieved in steady state in various circuit or varied circuit like inductor capacitor or maybe RC circuit. So, in situation where there are two or more energy storage elements, one must be able to predict the occurrence of severe oscillations as the circuit changes from one state to another. In electrical circuits, such oscillation can readily be cause dangerous currents or voltage under some, such, some circumstances and in electromechanical system, these oscillation cause can cause excessive high forces or torque which in turn may damage winding or mechanical parts of the shaft or the system. The typical example here if you look into the it is a charge inductor causes an arcing in the switch when it is open circuit. On the right side it is a capacitor charge can store the energy even after source is removed and that when it is really you are sorting that capacitor you will just see such kind of a sparking as, as it is observed in the diagram. So, if you have a charge inductor and you open the circuit of charge inductor you certainly find kind of a sparking as you see on left side and on the right side when you see the charge capacitor is sorted you will find there is already some charge on it and sometimes you are not aware with that and you will find such kind of a sparking while you sometimes we discharge also in practical application. 
well in some cases the interchange of energy during the transient state is such that the oscillations started by application of the forcing function do not cause and accordingly the new steady state is never reached. The system is then described as being a state of sustained oscillations and some practical application we use certainly such system or some such circuit like it is required. So, there is a typically an example whether such for sustained oscillation whether it is desirable or not. In some cases it is desirable, but some cases it is not desirable. The examples are in the next slide. If you take a RC oscillator waveform with the circuit, I mean as you have shown here, this certainly we require in such practical applications kind of continuous sustained oscillations. I mean the waveform generation for this kind of nature as it is shown as a white green tick mark in this circuit line. However, on the right side you just see the stepper motor. It is a motor which operates in position, step position, step to step and this in this step motor the step change in position versus time and when if you have a little larger torque it is supposed to go from one step to another, but if you allowed the little larger current that develop the little larger torque and cause the oscillation before it go to finally, steady state. So, we have to provide some kind of damping such oscillations because these are not desirable other, otherwise in the application because the operating equipment or driven equipment is also really have a vibration noise and vibration in the circuit which may not be desirable in many applications like. Of course, in some time even it may jump from one position to one it may miss some position one position in between also and that is also not expected for many many practical application because such all these stepper motors are operated in open loop in lot of application whether it is typically you can think about a application of the robotics or it is a some kind of position control like printer. There are plenty of application where we are using a stepper motor and it move in a step one step to the another step like. Well, previously the register inductor and capacitor elements and their combination can be formed as follows. It can be as a resistance capacitor circuit or it can be register inductor circuit or it can be inductor capacitor circuit or it can be register inductor capacitor circuits like RLC circuit like. So, you may have a one energy storage element and one of course, dissipative element like register or you may have a both energy storing com component or you may have a both energy as well as your typically dissipative component like I mean in the circuit. So, classify based on the number of energy storage element or the circuit order I mean it will be explained of course, in the free coming slides like. So, in RL and RC circuits find continual applications in electronics communication and control system. Well, analysis of RL and RC circuit produces differential equation because any energy storage element will certainly cause a differential equation and these are of normally of order of first order and these circuits are collectively known as first order circuits. There is only one energy storing element in this circuit. The based on the excitation method of the circuit, these circuits can further categorize as follows. So, there, there are two ways to excite the circuits. The one is by initial conditions of storage element in the circuit because this store energy storage element like inductor and capacitor can store the energy. So, that may have a circuit might have a some energy because of initial conditions either charge inductor or charge capacitor which can have energy into it or they can be excited by an independent sources may be by independent voltage source or the current sources which we discussed already in the last three classes. So, firstly assume the energy is initially stored in the capacitive or inductive element the energy causes current to flow in the circuit and is gradually dissipated in the resistors because the resistors is the dissipative element and these are known as source free circuits because you do not have any excitation circuit only the initial condition of energy storage elements have energy and that cause the re responsible for current to flow in the circuit like I mean. Well, the applications of such cases are I mean if we talk about the analogy between source free RC circuit is a fluid analogy a filled water tank discharging through a small pipe 
I mean can be equated the capacitor is charged with the voltage can be considered equivalent to a full tank and the height of the water in is analogous to the voltage and the outlet is open at the some time instant t and water is start draining and of course, circuit is start discharging that is the analogy between the two. Now, the additional features of this analogy is the source free RC circuit, the fluid flow analogy is filled water tank discharging through a small pipe. An analogy is a typically a you can call it RC circuit and it is analogous to that you close the switch and the capacitor is charged. So, that will cause in this circuit to a current to flow because of charge capacitor or so. So, that is I mean the analogy between the two system. I mean here it is the energy is stored in capacitor and in the water tank the energy is stored into the stored water. Well, the analogy another analogy between free RL circuit inductive circuit with the resistance typically as a force as a voltage as a stored energy of the inductor that can be equated with the you can call it the mass with the spring and it is a mechanical system it is a electrical system which have energy. So, here the B is corresponding to a damping friction and here it is a resistance in electrical circuit they equated both are damping elements or you can call it a lossy element in the circuit and here the mass is which stored the energy it is similar to like a inductance in electrical circuit and the mass velocity what we call it V m I mean this mass is moving with the velocity that is equivalent to the current flowing into the R L circuit. So, this is another I mean analogy of another type of system I mean with the mechanical kind of physical elements as you can see with this R L circuit like and well it can be again the kind of mechanical with rigid and another can be a electrical circuit with the R and C circuit as you can have two analogy. So, here it is a friction equivalent to analogies to resistance in electrical circuit and a step co coefficient k of this is being equivalent to 1 upon c as a capacitor uh, inverse correspond to that and force is typically have analogy equivalent to the voltage like I mean E in the two circuit. Now, coming to the typical applications of these RC and RL circuit, I mean the first let us take example of RC circuit can work as a filter for the signals applied to the input. I mean you have a AC signal distorted signal which we have in many electronic circuit or many circuit we might have a lot of distorted signal and we want to filter it. So, this CR I mean component work as a high pass filter it blocks the low frequency and DC component because of the capacitor and only the high frequency component goes at the output. In the second circuit which is RC circuit I mean again input signal may be the same with the high frequency distortion with the low frequency and this work as a low pass filter. So, low frequency uh, you can call it component I mean will only appear in the output across the capacitor like. So, we call it this is the left side is the high pass filter with the CR and right side is the low pass filter with the RC circuit and the response of this is typical. Another example is similar to for this high pass is the RL circuit I mean and low pass filter is equivalent to LR circuit. I mean this is something like we discuss it inductor and capacitor they have a different analogy concept why. I mean capacitor behave like a short circuit initially when it start charging and inductor behave as a open circuit and that is the reason why it is behaving here in the filter with the uh, just exactly opposite terminology in RL circuit filters. But of course, depends on many application and many application we use the RC filter, many application we use the RL filter. I mean it depends like what kind of elements you need it. Now, this slide give a response of your this RC filter circuit which we have shown earlier and the circuit virtually which is used in commercial low pass filter is also shown in PCB used in speaker. Uh, so, high pass filter and low pass filters waveform from noisy signals are shown here. So, the input signal is quite distorted which is shown as a blue and if you use the high pass filter that was the capacitor followed by the resistance. So, you will get only the uh, you can call it the orange color signal which is only the high frequency signal and that is the reason we call it only high, high frequency signal will pass through it 
and that's the reason we call it it is a high pass filter with another another filter as a low pass filter where we connected resistance and capacitor resistance in series and capacitor in parallel and the voltage across the capacitor is your green color which is of low frequency only maybe you can call it only the fundamental low frequency component of the green color i mean which really appear across the capacitor so that signal is of low frequency we that's the reason we call it like a low pass filter like and these circuits are certainly used in many many electronic circuit for the purpose of this analog signal filtering purposes like i mean or so well now coming to the application we have we need them of course to design it or to analyze the behavior of all these kind of circuit we need the mathematical operation i mean certainly you have energy storage element so sometime in general we need the integration but many cases we need the differentiation as well as we have a phase delay so such mathematical operations can be performed through the use of rc and rl circuits the typical example is here you have a typically a source or typically the forcing function and you have a resistance and capacitor which we talk about like kind of a uh, low pass filter and the response output will be 1 upon rc of integration of input voltage which is a function of time as shown is here so the upper signal is you can see in the waveform is the input and the second signal is of the your typically uh, the charging you can call it the voltage across the capacitor like common I mean. so initially as i told you this capacitor we have like a short circuit so the current is limited by resistance so it will start charging from zero voltage and then the voltage is start increasing till the around two time constant uh, we are applying the pulse of 200 millisecond as shown upper wave form and after that we removing the pulse so certainly i mean this will cause certainly the reduction of it will start discharging i mean this charge capacitor like i mean also well this is another let's say the circuit of that was of integration or you can call it this was the typically kind of your low pass filter and this is your differentiation i mean as you can see here the output voltage across the resistance will be a differentiation of the input voltage so that will be v out into rc into dv upon d p in input upon dt and you can see the upper wave form which is a pulse wave form i mean with the particular duty cycle of t on period and with the t off and total period of t and when you apply it to this circuit depending upon the element value of rc element and you will find that the response is like a differentiator and you get this kind of the wave form which is shown here of course this wave form shape of output also can be changed by changing the uh, typically changing the value of capacitor and resistor like it can be just made a small pulse of course i mean if you really uh, you can think about if uh, you change this resistance value i mean maybe quite a small to capacitor may be like to charge very quickly or discharge very quickly like also now it also use phase shifter i mean like as a phase shift we talk about in many operation we require phase shifting of the signal so if you have input signal let's say sine wave and we want phase shifting so you can design resistance capacitance for a particular frequency so that it give the 60 degree phase shift as you can see in the wave form the output is 60 degree leading then compared to the input of blue wave form and well this kind of uh, i mean circuit is typically you can call it like a um, with the different setting and the it's called certainly the phase shift uh, uh, typically the input certainly leads the output but if you look into the second circuit there are three stages of this uh, c and r circuit this called the phase shift and each circuit if it is designed with the proper element value to provide the 60 degree phase shift you will find after the three stages the output will be exactly 180 degree apart from the input sine wave so sometime of course we require this wave form for many control purpose especially in maybe power electronics or other i mean circuit we require exactly the either the 90 degree phase shift pulses or we require sometime your 180 degree phase shift pulses I and mean that can be attained by such network by proper phase shifting and designing the value of rc element of course it's a sensitive to the frequency i mean like so then if frequency changes certainly the value of elements of your rc's component also should change like but that is another application of these 
आर सी सर्किट फॉर फेस शिफ्ट एप्लीकेशन तो वी टॉक अर्लियर इट कैन वर्क एज ए इंडिकेटर इट कैन वर्क एज ए डिफ्रेंशिएटर एज वेल एज इट कैन वर्क एज ए फेस शिफ्टर लाइक आई मीन ऑफकोर्स फेस शिफ्टर वर्क एज ए टिपिकली आई मीन फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ योर ए सी सिग्नल साइनस सिग्नल लाइक वेल दीज काइंड ऑफ सर्किट्स हैव ए एप्लीकेशन इन हाई वोल्टेज सर्किट यूज इन कैमरा फ्लैश वेर यू रियली स्टोर द एनर्जी ऑन द सम एनर्जी स्टोरेज एलिमेंट एंड यू वॉन्ट टू हैव ए फ्लैश दैट रिक्वायर फॉर फोटोग्राफी कैन बी क्रिएटेड बाई सच सर्किट लाइक तो दैट इज वन ऑफ द इंटरेस्टिंग एप्लीकेशन ऑफ सच और यू कैन कॉल इट नेटवर्क और सर्किट लाइक द अदर एप्लीकेशन इज टोबोस्कोप यूज इन वार्निंग सिग्नल एंड यू कैन सी द सर्किट हेयर आई मीन लाइक ओपन सर्किट ऑफ ऑन पी सी बी टू सर्किट्स हेयर विच आर यूज इन डिफरेंट गजट फॉर दिस लाइटिंग पर्पज और स्टोबोस्कोप I mean, maybe a like a traffic light or warning light. There are plenty of I mean such kind of or you might have a might have seen the lighting on probably in many of the red light on the top of the cars or so. So these kind of lighting systems are used many many practical applications like. But you can see what is inside circuit of these like it's all consists of like energy storage element. I mean typically for different time duration for which you want to really design this timing circuit or you can call it like a. Typically, such flashing circuit also. The other uh, typical examples uh, which are used, typically, is a kind of mechanical and quartz mode. Quartz crystal oscillator also use a watch maintains the its oscillation. And here, how quartz work? It it beats 32,768 times a second, and that also certainly use some kind of circuit. I mean, by which these oscillations are created. I mean, that exactly uh, what we talk about earlier, the kind of sustained oscillation. so in such circuit we have a sustained oscillation caused by this circuit like um, also then the another example is typically you are maintaining a standard reference clock in digital circuit which called crystal oscillator are used inside the typically in megahertz crystal oscillator for the many processor i mean to create the clock or many circuit electronic circuit many other circuits you have to create the clock by providing the oscillations of such high frequency i mean in these as you can see on the pcb like common may be used for processor may be used as a timer circuit or to be like other kind of electronic circuit like then this is in several kinds of safety warning blinker traffic and safety blinker and indicator blinker in car as you can see here i mean using this timing circuit i mean related to traffic lighting or many other kind of such applications like well it is also used typically as you can see the circuit here the rlc circuit i mean you have a resistance you have a capacitor you have a inductor and its a speaker contains several rlc component to decide the impedance and thereby its performance for the purpose of like impedance matching we call it like common I mean, or to amplify typically the signal sound signal which comes in the electrical form and you really amplify it with the help of this circuit i mean like uh, of and you use the rlc component for the purpose of this Uh, entire complete circuit for amplification well it's a typical example is a pacemaker implemented in the chest to help regulate and control heart beat and pacemaker signal is shown in the typically and kind of right i mean how the signal i mean comes from this and that total pacemaker circuit also pacemaker also have a this signal which go to the circuit in this form like a new detect like another application is typically the pulse or function generator what have seen the laboratory as you see the photograph here by which you can generate either sine wave or you can generate square wave or you can generate the tangular wave or you can generate the sawtooth wave for testing many electronic circuit or many or i mean the circuit which re really require for the purpose of many applications like i mean and you want to see the behavior of uh, some circuit for which this uh, signal work as input pulses i mean and these all function generator also have a kind of a circuit which generate the sustained oscillation and where we are using all these energy storage component typically the here the capacitor and inductor as oscillator circuit with the some additional component in into this so that you will you are able to modify these waveform which you are see on the at the output terminal by changing the selector switch and circuit you can call it selector configuration changes as as well as home generation changes from one wave type of waveform to the another kind of waveform moreover you are able to add the offset also in this waveform to test your different circuit 
for the purpose i mean you are designing those circuit like um so the function generator pulse generator is a very standard product for the your teaching purpose in the laboratory as well as for the research purpose for testing your develop electronics for some specific applications like well coming to like a tangent response of first order uh, circuits so tangent response of first order circuit uh, i mean can be just uh, characterized a first order circuit is characterized by the first order differential equation an example is a circuit comprising a resistor and capacitor rc circuit with a one energy storage element and circuit comprising a resistor and inductor rl circuit and applying the kirchhoff's law to rc and rl circuit results in differential equation which are of first order since you have one energy storage component energy storage element or component you will be able to get only the one differential equation i mean in such circuit like so the excitation there are two ways of to excite the circuit the first is the initial conditions of a storage element we call it source free circuit means you don't have a separate source to excite such circuit and this circuit is excited by energy stored either in capacitor or energy stored in the inductor since you don't have a separate source i mean we call it the source free circuits like i mean or so we'll discuss of course with the examples another is the independent sources called force excitation circuit where you excite the circuit with either dc sources or sinusoidal sources or exponential sources or from the waveform which we have shown of the function generator in the last slide i mean so these all we call it like independent sources because their frequency amplitude and nature of the waveform i mean like it decided certainly by you independently so you just apply the such signal to your circuit for the purpose of like a testing a circuit like so we call it such circuit typically situation we call it the force excitation circuit like well the independent source or that is the dc source is considered here and this is known as a first order circuit by independent source and the natural response of circuit refers to the behavior in terms of voltage and current of the circuit itself with no external source of excitation the nat natural response the natural response of circuit refers to the behavior of in terms of voltage or current of the circuit itself with no external sources of excitation and the circuit has a response only because the energy initially stored in the energy storage element either capacitor or inductor and this is the typical example if you have a like a capacitor i mean which really the voltage is decaying in the circuit it means your charge this voltage is sustained at the your charge capacitor and by looking this response even you can find out the component value typically by the kind of time constant here it is defined here as a tau and we consider this when this voltage decay down to 0.368 from the initial voltage i mean to this because it's a exponential decay the output response is v0 that is the initial voltage into e to power minus t upon tau where x axis is the t so we say this is the time constant where the magnitude of this signal itself go to 0.368 v0 or 36.8 percent like of the original one in the case of rl circuit or inductive circuit again this is the inductor current which might be flowing in the inductor for long time and now suddenly you change the circuit in a manner that the this energy get depletes and current is start in the inductor is start decreasing that also have a response like i0 e to the power minus t upon tau where i0 is the initial current or steady state current flowing before the tangent occurs and here also you define a time constant i mean like uh, tau and here also we define that when the your current comes from initial current of i0 to 0.368 or 36.8 percent current of original comes to that value this we call define the time constant like um, of the circuit like this has a relevance this time constant we will talk about all the tangent are related with the circuit elements value and this time constant have a relevance corresponding to that like um, now so well the typical derivation if we take a source free rc circuit we'll discuss that how this circuit can be really have energy storage across the capacitor because it might be initially excited by some source of voltage under a steady state and capacitor is charged from that and suddenly open the circuit then this remaining circuit remains in this manner so a source free rc circuit occurs when its dc source is suddenly disconnected 
the energy is already stored in the capacitor is released to the register, may be many register, here it is on one register and RC source free circuit is analyzed to find an initial voltage V0 uh, and the time constant. So, that uh, you can call it this V0 is uh, typically the voltage at the time equal to 0 across the capacitor responsible for energy stored in the capacitor which decays with the respect to the time and RC this time constant is of course, in this circuit is the by uh, let us say the time constant is discharged so that we call it T equal to RC here like. So, we here we assume the voltage across the capacitor and since the capacitor is initially charged assume that at t equal to 0 the initial voltage across the capacitor is V 0 equal to V at the time 0 equal to V 0 and with the corresponding value of the energy stored as is W 0 across in the capacitor it will be half C V 0 square like. So, that is the energy stored across the capacitor under the steady state before we start the this tangent to happen I mean or response to happen. And while applying the KCL at the top node in the circuit yields that I C plus I R equal to 0, I C is the current flowing into the capacitor and I R is the current flowing in the register like. By definition I C will be equal to C d V by d T and R will be V by R. So, then the equation by putting this two value into the previous equation a comes C V D V C D V by D T plus V upon R equal to 0 or you can divide entire by C. So, it becomes D V upon D T plus V upon R C equal to 0. This is typically a first order differential equation of the V I mean typically and you can call it like a I mean now this equation again can be written here D V by D T plus V upon R C equal to 0 and to solve it we can rearrange the term as D V upon V equal to minus 1 upon R C into D T and you can find out typically by integrating both the side we can certainly get the uh, logarithmic, uh, logarithmic V ln V equal to minus T upon R C plus logarithmic A and where A is the natural log of the A is the integration time integration constant because we have taken the integration of this. Uh, equation and now this equation we can write logarithmic V upon A equal to minus 1 upon T upon R C and taking power of E produces V T equal to A into E to power minus T upon R C and this we can, but from the initial condition we know V 0 V at the time of 0 has been equal to A equal to V 0 and then this equation modified with proper initial condition this initial condition the V as a function of time V t equal to V 0 e to power minus t upon R c. It means the in this circuit only energy is stored is across the capacitor and which also decays in this closed circuit. I mean the energy get dissipated into the resistance which comes from here and this e to power minus t upon R c is the term which is responsible to decay this voltage I mean which is across the circuit or across the capacitor here like I mean also. So, it is exponential decaying equation and you can see how the waveform look like of this voltage decaying I and mean you can see initial voltage uh, charge capacitor voltage is V 0 and this is decaying with respect to the time and we already find the equation for this V 0 is equal V its equation is V 0 e to power minus T upon tau and at T equal to tau period the magnitude of this voltage remains only 0 0.668 V 0 and that we of course, is explained with the help this time is equal to time constant of the circuit equal to R c. So, as t increases the voltage decreases towards the 0 and the rapidly with the which the voltage decreases is expressed in terms of the time constant and denoted by tau. And this time constant of course, we define the time constant of circuit is the time required to the response to decay factor of 1 upon E or 36.8 percent of the initial value. And this at t equal to tau in this equation go to v at t equal to v 0 t uh, e to power minus t upon R c and that equation when you put tau in this it become v 0 e to power minus tau upon R c or it becomes v 0 
minus R C because tau itself is a value R C and this becomes equal to 0 0.368 V 0 and where the t tau is R C and V t V as a function of t will be equal to V 0 e to power minus t upon tau like in general equation. Now, this time constant is circuit with the small time constant. I mean what is the effect of this time constant of course, in the behavior or this waveform or tangent response. A circuit with the small time constant gives a fast response. It reaches the steady state or final quickly due to the quick dissipation of energy stored. Less time constant because time constant is RC. If you have a small resistance, certainly it will cause the larger the current to flow into the circuit and energy get dissipated at the faster the rate. Indirectly, you can interpret it in that manner. And a circuit with a large time constant gives a slow response because it takes longer time to reach the steady state. So, larger time constant means R and C value are more. So, in that case, if resistance is more, you will have a small current to flow and that will take longer time to dissipate that energy which is stored in, I mean in the capacitor across the resistance because there is no any other element which can probably absorb or dissipate the energy which is stored in the capacitor of this circuit like. Well, at any rate, whether the time constant is small or large, the circuit reaches a steady state approximately in 5 time constant as we define here. I mean you can just see here how it is like a time constant on the x axis time is written in terms of time constant 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. These are time constant and the waveform normalized waveform of this I mean circuit is V upon V 0 where V is the initial voltage that is the reason it is normalized to 1 and will be equal to e to power minus T upon tau and with the different time constant of the circuit as you can see whether t equal to 0.5, t equal to 1 or 2, you will find the typically response I mean like uh, are going to be different I mean with the changing of the tau value. So, plot of a v, v upon V 0 equal to e to power minus tau for various values of time constant or so. And you can call it the time constant here typically can be seen here which can be also get it from this characteristic as a tangent I mean on the initial portion of this of decay characteristic when it touches x axis that also is responsible to provide the time constant or you can find out the magnitude of it where it is rich go to like a around 36.8 percent of the initial voltage and that you can find out the really the time constant of the circuit by this response itself like. So, that is the graphical representation of the time constant tau from the response curve and here the time constant for this table gives the value of V upon V t upon V 0 e to power t tau minus t. So, with the respect to time I mean in terms of time constant like t 2 t 3 t 4 t and 5 t and you can see the initial typical at the first time constant the value is like a 0 0.36788 and at the 5 t it goes 0 0.003678 which is quite a small value compared to typically if you talk about compared to the previous original value I mean at the first time constant or initial value like or so even it is less than 1 percent of the initial voltage across the capacitor. So, that is the reason we say that at the 5 time constant almost the entire energy it remains less than 1 percent and you can call it like a typically voltage across the capacitor finally like I mean after the 5 time constant like in engineering value certainly we say this is almost going to be closer to the 0 like. Now, coming to the calculation of power dissipation because that power energy stored of the capacitor goes into the dissipation of power in the resistor only and that P as a function of T will be V i r and you this i we already calculated. So, it becomes like a V square upon r into e to power minus 2 T upon tau. So, that is the power dissipation in the resistor of this R c circuit like. So, energy observed by the resistor up to time T is I mean that also you can find out this how much is the energy W r w is written in terms of like kind of energy as a function of t. We can write that is the integration of the power 0 to t p lambda d t and that is 0 to t v square upon r e to power minus 2 lambda divided by tau into d t and it can be of course, calculated as a 0 equal to tau v square v 0 square upon 2 r e to power minus 2 tau upon t where the limits are 0 to t and it is written half c v square as a in terms of 1 minus e to power 2 lambda upon tau, where tau equal to R c as the t reaches to 
infinity this energy stored I mean typically go to the half C V square like now. Well, now coming to the source free R L circuit I mean this is we have a inductor which is stored the energy here and uh, uh, the circuit which consists of series connection of series resistance and inductor forms the source free R L circuit because we have a, a energy stored in the inductor because current is flowing in the inductor like this circuit of course initially we might have this some have a current in that inductor because of some part of the circuit which can leave at the steady state condition. So, current I t through the inductor is considered as a response of this system and since inductor current cannot change instantaneously, uh, how we can find out the response of this system. So, we can say at t equal to 0 assume that the inductor has a initial current I 0 or I 0 is equal to I typically as a time t, t equal to 0 is I 0 energy stored in the inductor at that instant it at W 0 equal to half L I square 0 or I square 0 and coming to the response of this applying the Kirchhoff's voltage law in the loop in this figure we can say V L plus V R equal to 0 and where V L is L D I by D T inductor voltage will be L D I by D T and V R will be I R. So, thus we can write this equation as a putting the value of V L plus V R equal to 0 we can write like a L D I by D T plus R I and which can be changed to D I upon D T plus R upon L into I equal to 0. So, rearranging and integrating of it give the I 0 typically I mean integration to with respect to T it go D I upon D I, D I upon I and equal to minus 0 to R upon L into D T and it will the integration will be logarithmic I as a function of T divided by I 0 equal to minus R T upon L or I T will be a equal be I 0 e to power minus R T upon L and you can call it the current through the inductor now will be I T will be I 0 initial current in the inductor I e to power minus R T upon L as a initial current and time constant of R L circuit here is tau equal to L upon R and I T will be as a we can write again equation here I 0 e to power minus tau upon tau. Of course, in capacitive circuit it was all in terms of voltage in inductive circuit it is all in terms of the current like. So, you have initial current I 0 again we define the time constant here tau and you can find out the time constant by two way either you take the slope of initial current decay and bring it to x axis that also tau or you look into when this current decay to 30 0 36.8 percent of initial current I mean that you draw the line so that is also the tau and the variation of this current is corresponding to I 0 initial current into E to power minus T upon tau where x axis represented as a T in terms of time like I mean. So, now the you can call it the power dissipation across the resistance it will be if we define as V R will be as if equal to I R and will be equal to I 0 R E to power minus T upon tau and the power dissipated in the resistor P will be equal to V R in V of resistance into I current flowing through there and that will be I 0 square R into E to power minus 2 T upon tau and energy absorbed by the resistor will be W R as integration of this power this will be half L I square and in bracket 1 minus T to power minus 2 T upon tau and when T approaches to infinity your energy stored goes to the half L i square. So, here we are able to go little faster in the sense because uh, this has this analysis have a simple analogy with the previous R C circuit like. Now, coming to the sold some numerical examples I mean we can say before going to that we can remember point to remember we have a elements R L C and the steady state condition we say it is a resistance remain resistance value, but in case of inductor initially during tangent it work as a open circuit under final steady state it behave like a short circuit for the typically for you can call it the DC current and the capacitor for voltage initially it behave as a short circuit and when it is a charge it behave like a open circuit. So, in the typically where capacitor is involved certainly if it is RC circuit that capacitor is charged so then it will behave like a open circuit you will not have a further to increase provided some other circuit conditions changes with the respect to the time. Now, coming to first example I mean with, with the source free 
R C circuit. Consider the circuit shown here in figure, figure, and let the V C, that is the voltage across the capacitor, initially at time t equal to zero is equal to 15 volt. Then you have to find out V C, V X, and I X in this circuit, where the resistance current is I X and voltage across it, across this 12 ohm resistance is the V X line. So first we need to make this given circuit to a standard R C circuit. So for that we have to find out the equivalent resistance of the Thevenin resistance at this capacitor terminal. I mean we consider this as here and just find out the equivalent Thevenin equivalent of this circuit and that is you can calculate equivalent of this circuit here and where the Thevenin equivalent will be of because across these two terminal these two resistance in series that become 20 ohm in parallel with the 5 ohm. So, that R equivalent of this Thevenin becomes only 4 ohm and the time constant you can find out of this circuit because capacitor value is given and you find out the equivalent resistance here that will be R C to 4 into 0.1 that become 0.4 second time constant is always in terms of second and thus V T V as a function of T will be V 0 e to power T on tau and that will be V T as a 15 e to power minus tau powered by 0.4 and or it will be V T equal to 15 e to power minus 2.5 t into t in terms of volt. Now, we can use the voltage dividend to get V x, V x will be the voltage across that 12 ohm. So, it will be 12 upon uh, your V upon 12 plus 8 that is the current. So, you get finally 0 0.6 into 15 e to power minus 2.5 t and that is finally the 9 e to power minus 2.5 t volts and current will be V x upon resistance that is a 12 ohm. So, I x will be V x upon 12 that is a point 0 0.75 e to power minus 2.5 T ampere the current flowing into that register what we have to find out like. Coming to second example I mean question 2 the switch in the circuit in the figure has been closed for a long time and it is open at T equal to 0 to find V T for the greater time greater than 0 uh, or equal to time greater than 0 or equal to 0 calculate the initial energy stored in the capacitor. So, in this circuit first switch was closed and because of this 20 volt source this capacitor is charged with some voltage and well we are supposed to discuss here the tangent when this switch is open. So, then the remaining circuit you can see will be with the 1 ohm and 9 ohm resistance with 20 microfarad millifarad capacitor with the charge. I mean from this 20 volt DC source. So, now discuss about it to first find out the initial condition I mean to so for T less than 0 that is means circuit have been in operation for longer time the switch is closed the capacitor is an open circuit uh, DC as represented in figure A using the voltage equation. So, we can find out here typically to find out the voltage VC it will be like in this circuit your 9 divided by 3. I mean this is open circuit means voltage whatever is the voltage across 9 ohm that will be the voltage virtually across the capacitor. So, it will be 9 uh, ohm resistance multiplied the current and that current will be your 20 divided by 9 plus 3 that is the current flowing into the this entire circuit. So, that comes as a 15 volt and this 15 volts is the initial condition corresponding to at time t equal to 0. So, since the voltage across the capacitor cannot change instead of the voltage across capacitor at t uh, equal to 0 minus is the same at t equal to 0 or V c 0 equal to V 0 equal to 15 volt that is the initial condition for this circuit I mean just to we have to find out I mean the response of source theory R c circuit and just look into how it is really form like. Now, coming to real solution for source theory R c circuit response for t equal to 0 the switch is open and we have the R c circuit shown in figure here where there is no source except the charge capacitor and we have a resistance here we have to find out typically a Thevenin equivalent of it. So, it comes like a 9 plus 1 plus 9 ohm that 10 ohm and time constant of this circuit will be R c. So, t equal to R c equivalent c that will be 10 ohm multiplied the typically your capacitor value of 20 milli 20 millifarad 20 into 10 power minus 3 equal to 0.2 second and thus the voltage across the capacitor for t greater than 0 will be V t equal to V c at 0 e to power minus t upon tau and that will be 15 into e to power minus t upon 0.2 or equal to 15 e to power minus 5 t volts.
and the initial stored energy in the capacitor will be half cv square and that will be equal to half 20 uh, into 10 power minus 3 20 millifarad into 15 square and that becomes 2.25 joules that is typically the energy across it. Now, coming to another example 3 determine I L T for the T greater than 0 for the following circuit. So, here also we have a 20 volt source and we have an inductor here with the 2 milli 2 Henry in series with 4 ohm resistance and first we have to find out the steady state current into when T is minus uh, less than 0 what is the current into that and that will become initial condition for source free R L circuit. Well, coming to the source free R L circuit I mean you can just see if we uh, the final circuit will be of this form I mean like uh, where the source free circuit that is I L T equal to I 0 e to power minus T upon tau that is the circuit here, but to find out this here what will the I L 0 I mean I 0 here in this circuit this is the circuit here I mean which is under a steady state I mean with the 20 typically your 20 volt DC. So, to find out I 0 consider the circuit at T less than 0 at T less than 0 the circuit is I mean like typically the inductor is sorted, sorted because it is a DC current. So, inductor drop will be 0 because there is no d i by d t in the inductor. Okay, so, the drop will be 0. So, now you can find out the response of this typically I mean the total uh, circuit response will be your 20 volt divided by the resistance of this circuit and resistance of this circuit you can find out these two resistance are coming in parallel 16 16 that will become 8 ohm and from now uh, this 8 ohm in parallel with 8 ohm will become 4 ohm and 4 ohm in parallel with the 4 ohm will become 2 ohm that is the shown typically shown here and you will find now 2 4 ohm resistance that 2 ohm resistance will be a current will be a uh, 20 by typically 8 ohm plus that 2 ohm of equivalent of this will be 10 ohm the current will be of 2 ampere in the entire circuit and that 2 ampere now out of 2 ampere 1 ampere will go to this and 1 ampere will come to this circuit. So, your I L you can call it T will be equal to only 1 ampere like and that I L 0 will be I 0 equal to 1 ampere and to find out T consider the circuit at T greater than 0 and where the T is L upon R that is 2 upon 8 or 1.4 second and I L T will be I 0 e to power minus T upon tau ampere and that will be equal to 1 e to power minus 4 T ampere like. Well, coming to example 4 determine the I L I T at the T equal to 0.5 second for the following circuit and here you have a current source of 10 ampere and you can just see how it is a 5 ohm resistance and the inductor of 2.5 Henry with the 5 ohm typically of uh, your resistor like. So, here coming to the solution I mean we can just see initially I mean how this the inductor circuit inductor is charge here. So, you can say this is the circuit here and in this circuit because a current source you can say I T will be equal to I mean this I T will be equal to I 1 minus I L and this is you can call it I L is here and this is I 1 I minus I L will be current flowing into this short path and then I 5 typically will be 0 here because I mean you, you will find it is current going to be and then I 1 will be equal to 10 ampere and I L T will be I 0 e to power minus T upon tau where tau is your L upon R that is 2.5 ohm divided by 5 that will be half second to find out I 0 consider the circuit less than T equal to 0 that is typically of this nature. So, I L 0 will be 10 I mean these two uh, typical 10 ohm in parallel to with uh, the current of 10 ampere and 5 ohm current here divided by 5.5 that is a 5 ampere and I 0 5. So, I L will be at T equal to 5 e to power minus 2 T ampere and then finally, I T will be I 1 minus I T I L T and that will be 10 minus 5 to power e 2 minus 2 T and time T equal to 0.5 second. So, I T will be 10 minus 5 e to power minus 1 we put the value of that and become 10 minus 5 I uh, mean with the 0 0.3689 and that becomes current of 8.16 ampere like. Now, coming to example 5 assuming that I 0 is equal to 10 ampere calculate the I t and I x in the circuit of figure given here where I s is the current going to be in the 
2 ohm resistance and typically here is the voltage dependent voltage source with the voltage of 3 i where current i is flowing through the inductor. So, there are two ways to we can solve this problem. I mean first method is the equivalent resistance is the same as that thevenin equivalent of the inductor L terminals I mean typically and uh, because of the dependent source we have to insert the voltage source of V equal to 1 volt here to find out the thevenin equivalent at the inductor terminal of A B as shown in this circuit and now we, we can find out the response of this. So, now applying the KVL for the two loop. So, here first loop 2 into I 1 minus I 2 plus 1 ohm this is the equation for this. So, it give a relation I 1 minus I 2 equal to minus half and the second loop equation will be your 6 I 2 minus 2 I 1 uh, minus 3 I 1 this one this equation equal to 0. So, I 2 will be equal to 5.6 I 1 from the 2 equation we can find out the value of I 1 I 2 solving this and that give I 1 equal to minus 3 ampere I 2 equal to minus I 1 that is again 3 ampere in this circuit and R equivalent R thevenin will be V 0 upon I 0 that we discussed last lecture. So, it is a 1.3 ampere ohm and time constant of circuit L upon R q that is a half upon 1 by 3 that becomes 3 by 2 second and the current through the inductor with I t will be I 0 to power minus t upon tau and that is your tan uh, into e to power minus 2 by 3 t for t greater than 0 like. So, second method is applying the KVL to the circuit loop for 1 that we can write here in this equation half d i t or d i 1 upon d t plus 2 i 1 minus i 2 equal to 0 and for loop 2 that is similar to 6 i 2 minus 2 i 1 minus 3 i 1 equal to 0 and that i 2 becomes 5 by 6 i 1 and solving this equation typically for in the give the d i 1 upon d t plus 2 by 3 i 1 0 equal to 0 and rearranging this d i 1 upon i 1 equal to minus 2 by 3 d t. So, where the since i 1 equal to i we may replace i 1 with the i and integrate it. So, it comes the logarithmic i with the initial to final current i i at t i t equal to 0 to i at t that becomes minus 2 by 3 t at 0 to t. So, logarithmic i t upon i 0 will be minus 2 by 3 t and that is i t equal to i 0 e to power 2 minus 2 by 3 t and that is equal to tan upon tan e into power minus 2 by 3 t ampere for time greater than 0 like. Well, the voltage across the inductor will be now V equal to L d by d t that will be equal to 0 0.5 into 10 and minus 2 by 3 e to power minus 2 by 3 t and that becomes minus 10 by 3 e to power minus 2 by 3 t volts and since the inductor and the 2 ohm resistance are in parallel. So, I x will be V by 2 that is minus 1.667 e to power 2 by 3 minus 2 by 3 into t ampere for t greater than 0. Now, coming to example 6 the switch in the circuit of figure has been closed for the long time. So, that you can find out the steady current into the inductor of 2 Henry at t equal to 0 switch is open and calculate the it I mean the current in the inductor for greater than 0 period or 0 second. So, now first we have to find out the initial current here because of this voltage source that will give you the circuit after opening into as a source free RL circuit. So, solution is for t equal to less than 0 the switch is closed I mean this circuit is uh, formed in that way and inductor as a short circuit to the DC and the 16 ohm resistor I mean like it is short, short, short circuited and the resulting circuit shown in figure here. So, you will find having an equivalent resistance of it I mean typically because this source also have to be. So, it will become like your 4 into typically 12 plus 4 into 12 in plus 2. So, having an equivalent here. So, it is 5 ohm and I 1 will be 40 by 5 that will become 8 ampere from the source and from we can obtain I 0 from I 1 from this figure using this circuit division. I mean like so, I t equal to 12 upon uh, 12 plus 4 I 1 and that is equal to 6 ampere for t less than 0. So, that give you the initial condition of the current in the inductor like. So, since current through the inductor cannot change instantaneously. So, when t greater than 0 the switch is open open, open and the voltage across and the voltage source is disconnected. So, I 0 becomes at I t 
equal to 0 minus that is a 6 ampere. Now, we have the source theory R L circuit shown in figure here combining the register. So, we have R E Q equal to 7 equivalent 12 uh, plus 4 in parallel 16. So, that becomes 8 ohm and the time constant become L upon R E Q that is 2 by 8 and that is 1 point 1 by 4 second equal to 0.25 second and i t is your i 0 e to power t upon tau and that is nothing but 6 e to power minus 4 t ampere. Now, coming to the example 7, the in the circuit shown in figure find the i 0, v 0 and i for all the time assuming that the switch was open for a long time. I mean to that to find out initial condition I mean like and of course, we have to find out the variation of this all three means current in the register voltage across 3 ohm as well as the current in the inductor for time greater than 0 or equal to 0. So, this was earlier you can call it typically the closed line. So, it is better to first find the inductor current and then to obtain other quantity from it and for typically t less than 0 the switch is open. So, since the inductor act like a short circuit. So, like to DC the 6 ohm register is short circuited this also short circuited because it is a short circuit and so that we have the circuits very simple circuit and now you have a total resistance 5 ohm itself. So, the current flowing through this become 10 upon 2 plus 5 2 ampere for less t less than 0 and V t V 0 will be the voltage across the typically 3 ohm resistance will be 3 I t that will be 6 volt I mean across the resistance at t equal to 0 like now when and the I 0 will be of 2 ampere so 4 t greater than uh, 0 second the switch is closed. So, that the voltage source is short circuited. So, now we have a source free R L circuit shown here in the figure I mean like in so at the time inductor terminal R T H will be 3 in, in parallel with 6 uh, ohm and tau will be L upon R T H equal to 1 second. So, time constant now here the I T will be I 0 e to power minus T upon tau that is 2 e to power minus T upon tau for time greater than 0 and because of the inductor is in parallel with the 6 ohm and 3 ohm register. So, we can write V 0 equal to minus V L and that is minus L dy by dt equal to minus 2 in bracket minus 2 e to power minus t and that is 4 e to power minus t volt for t greater than 0 and I 0 is V L upon 6 and that is minus 2 upon 3 e to power t ampere for t greater than 0 and for thus for the all time. I 0 is equal to 0 ampere less than t and that is minus 2 by 3 t to the power minus tau for time greater than 0 and V 0 is 6 V for time less than 0 and for time greater than 0 it is 4 e to the power minus t and I t will be 2 a and 2 e to the power minus t for time greater than 0 and you can see the variation here with respect to the time of variation of I which goes from 2 ampere decay to and that is the I 0 minus 2 by 3 ampere to going to towards 0 like well coming to the question 8 the switch s is closed in position 1 sufficiently long time you means time t less than 0 and then it is kept uh, position 3 as shown here not position 3 virtually position 2 I mean as shown in the figure here. So, now you can find out the typically the steady current in the inductor and from that we can solve here this. So, compute the value of V L I L the instant just period to the switch uh, changing at t equal to less than 0 and the instant just after the switch changes that is t equal to uh, t equal to time greater than 0. So, find also the rate of current change of current through the inductor at time t plus t equal to 0 plus. So, now you can find out at t at 0 minus the current through the voltage across the inductor R I L 0. Ten, I mean you can find out from divide rule that 10 upon 10 plus 10 equal to 10 that is 5 ampere and V L equal to 0 volt and T equal to 0 plus it will be I L at time T is equal to 0 plus that will be 5 ampere and V L 0 will be equal to minus 10 plus 10 into 5 that is a minus 100 volt and the rate change of the current through the inductor at time T greater than 0 is a obtained as L D I by D T and that is minus 100 volt that is di by dt will be or minus 100 by 4 that is minus 25 ampere per second. So, now we have some practice problem I mean which you can probably on similar line which you can solve yourself and you can practice it I mean using what the concept we have discussed today. 
there are some quiz questions i mean rc circuit has a r equal to 2 ohm and c equal to 4 microwatt time constant is what that is a rc that is a virtually typically your 8 second and rc circuit is an example of uh, typically of first order zero order third order and second order is a first order circuit find the time constant of the circuit shown here so you can find out time constant that is a l upon r equivalent of it so it comes like when you solve it it will be coming 250 microsecond or so. so then an rl circuit is an example of your first order because it's only one typically your stored energy element here and in the figure uh, here your c1 c2 our ideal capacitor c1 has a head being charged to 12 volt and c2 discharge before the idle switch so at t equal to 0 the current i t will be for 0 a step function exponential and again so it will be impulse function because you are applying the typically the charge across the capacitor which we have like a kind of short circuit initially like to determine the time constant of our circuit so you can find out time constant it comes like 1.5 second find the time constant for all the circuit you have given l to l upon r that is a 2 second and similarly a capacitor in rc circuit r equal to 1 c equal to 0 this being charged calculate the time constant required for the capacitor to charge 63.4 percent and it from this calculation it comes like a 4 second that is the time constant. These are the references I mean for the two day these books which you can refer if required to go through and thank you. Thank you.